Now, Gangbusters, presented in cooperation with police and federal law enforcement departments throughout the United States. The only national program that brings you authentic police case histories. Gangbusters has asked the Honorable Frederick H. Block, Assistant United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York, to narrate tonight's case. Thank you, and good evening, Gangbusters listeners. Let's start tonight's case in a second-floor room of a dingy rooming house near the bay section of a large eastern city. It was five o'clock in the morning, and persistent pounding on the door of Vicki Chester was needed to awaken her. She was by trade a night spot hostess and had retired only an hour before. For a moment, Vicky sat on the edge of the bed. Then, as the door pounding persisted, she slipped on a light negligee and went to the door. Oh, all right, all right, take it easy. Five o'clock in the morning. Oh, who is it? Who is it? Well, then a fine chance you got. I'd think twice before I let in somebody I know. Now, it's 5 o'clock. Go on away. I got a lot of sleep to catch up on. I'm a friend of Pinky. Oh. Yeah? That's right, that's right. Come on, come on. Open up. Pinky who? Waldo. Pinky Waldo. Just a second. Come in. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Excuse me for not being more formally dressed. Don't bother me any. Company was the last thing I expected at five o'clock in the morning. Well, Pinky's sort of a magic word around here, huh? Pinky and I meant a lot to each other. Did you see him in? Were you cellmates or something? How's he look? I didn't even know Pinky was doing a bit until I tried to look him up tonight. Oh? You see, Pinky owes me a lot. He said if I ever got to this burg, he'd pay off. <laughs> Looks as if I got the town too late. Yeah, about a le- year too late. Or about three years too early, whichever way you want to look at it. Now, go on. I don't get much sleep as it is. Uh, did Pinky ever mention, uh, Slim to you? Slim? Yeah. You want Slim? I'm Slim. Well, sit down, Slim. Make yourself at home. <laughs> Listen, if it weren't for you, I'd never even have met Pinky. He'd have been stuck away in some can in West Virginia. It was in Ohio. Yeah, that's... Say, who told you about me? I heard about you. Well, couldn't you wait until noon or sometime? Do you have to go pounding on doors at this hour? And incidentally, how'd you manage to get in the downstairs door? That's always locked. I managed. Ain't that enough? Yeah, I guess it is. What'd you want with Pinky? I'm broke. Well, don't look at me. I ain't no good for a touch. No, it's not a touch I'm looking for. I just want somebody with connections to get me a heater. Oh. Who do you know? Listen, Slim. You look like a nice guy, but I don't want to get mixed up in anything. Well, what are you going to get mixed up in? All I want you to do is to tell me where I can get my hands on a gun. Cheap. Well, I... Now, look, look. I'm trying to make enough to get to Arizona. There's a good deal waiting for me there. I had a bundle, but it was chump enough to get in a crap game in Jersey City. Took my last nickel to come here and look up Pinky. Well, Pinky can't do you no good now. Not from where he's sitting. No, but you can. Come on, now, how about it? Where can I get my hands on a gun? All right, okay. I work at a joint called The Barrel over on... Yeah, 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 I know. I was there. It was closed. (laughs) Well, they got laws about closing, you know. What about the heater? You come around to The Barrel about 10 o'clock tonight. There's a guy I'll introduce you to. He can take care of me? If I recommend you, yeah. Good. You know, you ain't bad looking, you know. I don't want to waste any time. How long are you going to be around here, Slim? Mm, Not any longer than I can help it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Arizona. You're sure that this connection can furnish me a gun? Relax, Slim. You'll get your heater. Just come around to the joint tonight. Listen, Vicky, I got no more dough to spend on drinks. Where is this clown? You're always in a hurry, Slim. Sit still. He'll be here. You're sure that he can take care of what I want? You'll get to Arizona. Don't... Uh Uh-huh. Didn't I tell you to have patience? There he is. Him? Yeah, him. 
He don't look much like an operator. Well, what do you care how he looks as long as he's got the goods? Wait till I give him the... Oh, he spotted me. Here he comes. Uh, when I give you the high sign, blow. Listen, you don't have to tell me. I don't want to get involved in any deal. Oh, Vicky, How goes it? Selling lots of rot gut for the house? I sell my share. Jack, Slim. Hi. Sit down, Jack. Thanks. My feet are killing me. Jack. Yeah? Slim's a friend of Pinky's. Ah, you don't say. I do say. Well, any friend of Pinky's a friend of mine. Put it there, Slim. Slim's got some business for you, Jack. What can I do for you? Uh, look, boys. You'll excuse me. The boss is getting peed, my sitting at one table so long. Yeah, go ahead, kid. And, uh, thanks. For what? For a lot of things. Okay. I'll float around later. Nice girl, that Vicky. Sweet as they come. We could talk about that all night. Not me. Early to bed, early to rise. It's my motto. What can I do for you, Slim? I want a heater. Cheap. Cheap? You heard me. What I got was all hard to come by. Well, what have you got? Anything you want. I aim to please. What for uh, around 20 bucks? 20 bucks? Yeah, that's all I'm going to spend. Well, I got an old beat-up Colt 38 special. It ain't much good. I'll take it. I wouldn't recommend it to my worst enemy. I said I'll take it. Okay. The customer is always right. <laughs> that's what you always say, huh? Always. Uh, when do you want it? Right now. Let's go. You're in an awful hurry. Uh, slim, ain't that right? Yeah, that's right. Now, where's the gun? Got to make me some dough beginning the night. Why rush? Haste makes waste. Why don't we have a drink then? Come on, come on. Let's get the gun. Okay. You're the doctor. say we take a turn up 80th, Serge. Sure, Ed. Up and back and we'll call it a night, okay? <laughs> yeah, I got... Hey. Hmm? Look at that. Yeah. Kind of late for anyone to be huddled in a doorway. Uh, let's have a peek in here, man. Stay here and cover me, Sarge. Right, Ed. Hey, buddy. We're police officers. We... That's fine enough, Copper. Watch him! Uh Yeah, what do you want? It's me, Slim. Open up. Oh. How many times do I have to tell you? Five o'clock in the morning, I'm yeah, asleep yeah, yeah, like yeah, all these... Yeah, yeah, I was in the neighborhood, Vicky. Well, it's a fine reason. Well, I'm in a jam. I want to stay here a few hours. What kind of a jam? The worst kind. Believe me. Oh, well, then, look, you better get out of here. I can't. I can't go out on the street. Not right now. Now, listen, Slim. Pinky or no Pinky, enough's enough. I don't want trouble. What kind of trouble can you get keeping me here a few hours? Well, I... I don't know. What kind? What do you say we sit down? All right, why not? I, um, guess you'll be leaving for Arizona a lot quicker now, huh? What makes you think so? Well, you get a gun, you get in trouble. The worst kind of trouble. Suppose we forget about my trouble. Okay, Slim. I hate trouble anyway. Come here, Vicky. Oh, Slim. Well, well... What do you think Pinky will have to say about that? Who cares? Let him say anything he likes. So, gangbusters listeners, as police were searching the neighborhood for the killer, the murderer, John Slim Patterson, had found a place to hide for a few hours. As he enjoyed the company of one woman... He had no idea another would be called upon to play an important part in bringing this case to a conclusion. As the search began and the alarm spread, Sergeant Earl Howard was standing in the corridor at the hospital where the detective's body was taken. He heard steps approaching and looked up to see Detective Captain Frank Delaney. Hello, Sergeant. 
Captain? He's dead, Captain. He was dead on arrival. Yes, I heard. What about his family? They've been notified? Yes, they're all in there. I'd like to talk to him. Come on. Helen Branch. Uh, she's a policewoman attached to the forgery squad. She's a friend of the family, Captain. She brought them. Yes, I know her. Maybe it'd be best if I took you back home. There's nothing you can do here. Oh, excuse me, dear. Hello, Sergeant. Have you heard? Did they get the killer yet? No, not yet. How are you, Captain? Helen, do you think it'd be all right if I talked with her a minute? I think so. I think she'd appreciate it. Suppose we step outside, Helen. All right, Sergeant. That's an awful thing. For them to wake her in the middle of the night. For them to tell her her husband's dead. Yes, I can imagine. Every time he went out on duty, she was afraid it would happen. For years, every day she was afraid. Now she doesn't have to be afraid anymore. Look, Helen, when you go back in, would you tell her we're doing everything we can to get the killer? I wish I could be assigned to it. I wish I could do something. It's going to be a tough job. If there's ever anything I can do, call on me. Promise you'll call on me, Sergeant. All right, Helen. I promise. Captain Delaney. Oh, yes. What does it look like? Was that so old? Come in, Sergeant. That old, huh? Okay, if you run anything else, give me a call. Hello, Captain. Sit down, Sergeant. Thanks. That was a report of the bullet that killed Ed. Oh? It was a thirty-eight caliber slug. Apparently, it came from a Colt Special. Forty-year-old Colt Special, at least forty. The grooves run counterclockwise in the slug. Mm -hmm. Haven't made that type of gun in forty years. What's new with you? Oh, nothing much. We spend all day shaking down rooming houses in the neighborhood. Not a trace of them. Well, I imagine he's still in town, Earl. The publicity this thing's is getting ought to keep him pretty close to his room. And pretty scared. Captain, I'd like to try something. What? Well, maybe this guy has a room in that neighborhood. Maybe he hasn't. Seems to me more of a cinch that he's been hanging out in one of the joints down there. Mm hmm. Well, suppose I pack a bag and visit a few of them. Suppose I get the word around that I'm a hot customer from Philly. Maybe you got an idea, Earl. I don't think there's anything to lose except a little time. And maybe I can make connections that'll lead me to the right guy. Okay, Earl. Have a try at it. I'd like I was saying, boys, what's another drink? You buy me a drink hey, and Mickey. I'll be... Uh, what? Telephone. Oh, okay. Excuse me, will you, fellas? Yeah, sure. Go on back. Oh, hiya, Jack. Not over sit down, Vicky. I want you to meet a guy. I got a call on the phone right now. I'll be right back. Okay, but don't forget. Telephone. Some guys ought to know better than call you up during working hours. Hello? Vicky. Yeah. Who is this? Slim. Slim? I thought you'd be halfway to Arizona by now. Well, I decided to stick around till things cool off. Look, Vicky, I gotta see you. Listen, Pinky won't be a friend of yours if he finds out what's been going on. Yeah, forget about Pinky. Well, look, why don't you drop in here to the joint? Jack's here and... You think I'm crazy? All right, all right. I I get through here in about another hour or so. How about me dropping around to your place? Where is it? Never mind. Well, okay, if that's the way you feel about it, Mr. Slim, goodbye. Fine thing. Hey, Vicky, come on. I'll buy you a drink. I'll see you later. Hey, Jack. You know who... Sit down, Vicky. Who's your friend here? This is Earl, um... Just Earl. Glad to see you. He's not out of Philly. He's a friend of Big Jake. Is that so? Hotter than a $2 pistol. Listen, I wouldn't go shouting it all over the joint. Now look, Jack, the guys in Philly said you could help me get a room. I can't go lugging the suitcase all over town. I told you I'll help you get a room. You know of any place, Vicky? I don't know of any place. Jack, you know who that was on the phone? Oh. Slim. Slim? I 
I thought he'd be in Arizona by now. Well, the operator didn't say nothing about long distance. Hey, you're not going to be like this guy Slim, are you, Earl? I do the guy a favor and he gets himself all jammed up. Jack. What's the matter? I didn't do him a favor? If you call making some dough off a guy a favor. How much can I make? He wouldn't give me more than 20 for the gun. Oh, let's talk about something else. Yeah, room for me, for instance. Hey, maybe we can get him Slim's room. Slim's leaving for Arizona. Well, I don't know where Slim's staying. Ah, come on, Vicky. Don't kid your Uncle Jack. You've been seeing Slim. I don't know where he lives. What do you want from me? It ain't the way I heard it. I don't care how you heard it. Look, look, this ain't getting me any place. The guy's hot around town, Earl. He's got a deal out in Arizona. He wants to get out as quick as he can. If she'll open up and tell me where he is, I'll fix it. I told you, I don't know. Okay, I can't sit around all night with a suitcase. Listen, I can't do you no good. If I could, I would. I can't. Well, what do you say we all take a ride downtown? I can't go nowhere. I don't get off for another hour. What am I doing in your troubles anyway? Find your own room. Oh, you don't get it, Vicky. This is a pinch. I'm a police officer. What? I don't hey. want any disturbance. Come on, both of you. Listen, I didn't do nothing. What do you want me for? I'm as innocent as a newborn babe. Let's just go downtown. We'll get it all straightened out. Let's straighten it out. Well, Captain, I'm put away for the night. Well, I think they've told us everything they know. Yes, yeah, so do I. Sit down, Earl. Thanks. It was a nice piece of work. Yeah, a lot of good it does. After I covered all those joints to find him. All I know him by is Slim. I yeah. don't know where he lives. And might be headed for Arizona any minute. I wonder what this guy has in Arizona. I don't know, but whatever it is, Captain, he sure wants to get to it. Yes, he knows we'll have a tough time getting out of this town. Earl? Yes, Captain? I think I'll have a policewoman assigned to this case. Helen Branch? Didn't she tell you she'd like to do something? She practically begged to help. Okay, get her on the phone. Maybe there is something she can do. What's that, Captain? This Slim, whoever he is, wants to get to Arizona. He knows we've got a good idea of what he looks like. He knows we've got the railroad stations and the buses watched. He's read about the roadblocks. Chances are he's too scared to step out of his room. Yeah, but what's that got to do with Helen Branch? He gets the papers, for sure. And holed up in that room, he probably reads every word. If you were wanted for killing a policeman, you were trying to get to Arizona, what would you do if you read an ad in the paper that went something like this? Wanted young man to drive new automobile... To Arizona. Phone Mrs. Helen Branch, Central. Hey, Captain, that's the ticket. Okay, get hold of Helen and tell her what we've got in mind. You bet your Captain, right away. Uh, what do you think, Sergeant? You think he didn't see the ad? Maybe, Helen. It was in this morning's paper. If he hasn't seen it by now... Oh, well, I guess it's too much to hope for. And you know how it is in this business. You've got to wait and wait and then wait some more. And if nothing comes with the idea, we try something else. And you think it's no use? Well, we'll let the ad run tomorrow, too. If that... Uh... That's it. All right, now, take it easy. I will. If it's him, hand it like we planned. All right. Okay, pick it up. Hello? Hello, is this Mrs. Helen Branch? Yes, talking. Uh, you're the one who put the ad in this morning's Times? Yes, that's right. Well, I'll be glad to drive your car to Arizona. Uh, the ad didn't say, are you, uh, are you going along or is it going empty? Oh, well, I'm going along. I just didn't want to do all the driving. Oh. Uh, well, when were you counting on leaving? Uh, tomorrow sometime. Well, that's okay with me. We'll have to exchange references, I suppose. Why don't you come over? I live at... I can't make it just now. Oh. Well, can we meet someplace? Yeah, I guess we'll have to. But do you want to give me your name and phone number? Well, uh, suppose we meet at 7 o'clock. Downtown on the corner of Main and Commerce. You know, in front of the drugstore. But how'll I know you? Well, what's your car look like? Oh, it's a new Pontiac four-door. Green. Pontiac four-door green. Okay. All right, then I'll see you. Main and Commerce, 7 o'clock. Uh, my name is Slim. Hello? Hello, hello? Uh, he said his name was Slim. Good work, Helen. I'm to meet him on the corner of Main and Commerce, 7 o'clock, in front of the drugstore. He'll be met, all right. 
Well, it's probably the captain. But you better answer it just to make sure. Hello? This is Captain Delaney, Helen. Would you let me talk to Sergeant Howard, please? He's right here. Sergeant. Thanks. Hello, Captain. I heard the conversation. Looks like the boy. How about it? Are they able to trace the call? Well, it hasn't come through yet, but... Just a second. What was that? Okay, there's a squad of detectives down there. Have them take a look around. Earl. Yeah? The call came from the pay station in the pay section. Well, that doesn't help much. He's probably gone by now. Tell her she'll have to meet the killer tonight. But tell her not to worry. We'll have every man we can spare in the neighborhood. In the darkness of that winter evening, the policewoman, Helen Branch, drove to the busy corner to keep her appointment with a killer. However, she was not entirely alone. The neighborhood swarmed with detectives on the alert for their man, and Sergeant Earl Howard was out of sight on the floor of the car, behind the seat, as she reached the rendezvous. Parking space. All right, pull in. Now turn off the motor. I, I don't see him, Sergeant. Well, if he's here, he'll take a little time to look around. Just doesn't seem... Sergeant, there's a man. He's coming. Does he fit the description? I, I can't tell yet. He... Yes. Yes, he does. Okay, don't talk to me anymore. A lady. Oh. Uh, just a second. I'm Slim. You the lady that's going to Arizona? Yes, I'm the one. Well, move over. I'll get in. We can talk about it. Well, suppose All we right, do... Slim. Hey, what police the... officer, don't move. Now, look out. <laughs> Come on, you, Slim. Take it easy. Yeah, well, I ain't... Watch I... him! How do you jump? Oh, oh. Good. That ought to hold him, Captain. Take care of this guy, man. All right. Uh, Come on, you. Get... Oh, nice work, Helen. Thanks, Captain. All right, man. Let's get him in. That gangbuster's listeners was exactly how this killer was apprehended. He was tried for the crime of first-degree murder and sentenced to death. The man who sold him the gun, an almost equal menace to society, is now serving a life term as an habitual criminal. Well, thank you, Assistant United States Attorney Frederick H. Block, for this enlightening case history. And gangbuster's congratulations to all the detectives who participated in the investigation and the brave policewoman who was of such great assistance in trapping this murderer. Tonight's case was dramatized by Stanley Ness and directed by William Sweets with Miss Leslie Woods and Chuck Webster in leading roles. Don Gardner speaking. (laughs) 